Hello and welcome to this new episode of Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers podcast. Today we're talking about the challenges of working for your narcissistic mother, as in being involved in like your job, being connected somehow to her. This could be working for her, working with her. This could be also working not just for your narcissistic mother, but in the family business. And if you have a family that has narcissistic behaviors, narcissistic dynamics within the family. And and this can be helpful also if you have, like listening to this episode can be helpful also if you have any money uh, binds with your mother still. So you mightn't be working for her, but there's like a money control issue. Now I know that that's a little bit of a separate topic, but I'm I, I I'm sure that there would be benefit in this episode for you as well. So, um, but before we go into that, before we go into that, I I wanted to to share about what's happening, what's coming. I'm very excited about it because in February, at the beginning of February, February fifth, we're starting with the women's circles. Um, so the uh, application for those are fully open there is a link in the description of this episode where you can go and apply for that and if you feel like Im- you mightn't be able to make uh, to make it live to the circles apply anyways get in touch with me because there is a new offering that is coming alongside the women's circles which is a community where you're gonna get weekly practices and guided videos um, and a community where you can share but without the live uh, circles so there's two offerings coming on and at the moment I still have to update the website we're working on it so be patient with me but at the moment if you apply for the women's circle you can inquire about both things um, and you can book your, your free intro call with me, which is necessary anyways for anything, for any offering with me. You need to come on a free intro call with me first, which is great because you get to ask all the questions you need to ask. And and you get to also yeah, talk one on one with me and we get to feel into each other and stuff. So that's really, yeah, just go down onto the link if you're interested in that. And also I have my email address always in the description of the video for if you're interested in any one-on-one work with me. As very soon in the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm opening another wave for the 10 weeks one-on-one inner transformation healing mother wounds program. So there's four spaces for that. Um, And yeah, you can email me if you're interested in that. Now, with all that said, let's go back to the episode so someone recently reached out to me mentioning that they work for their narcissistic mother and that they're finding the experience to be like soul destroying and that reminded me of the time when I used to work with my mother um, for her before I realized how toxic the entire relationship was when I was so enmeshed with her and I thought she was the most amazing person in my world I would do anything to keep that connection uh, and to get her validation and to have her attention, um, w- which she would obviously not give. <laughs> her her thing has always been to withdraw her affection and to, um, yeah, not to be available. That That was her thing, but I didn't know that. So I was always chasing her and working for her seemed like the best way to have a relationship with her. So I did that. And it also brought back to my mind all the pain and suffering that working with her brought me at the time. And for years afterwards, it has had, it has taken me a long time to get over a lot of the stuff that happened when I was working for her. So I wanted to do an episode on this, as I know it affects many of us in some way. Um, maybe you are currently working for your mother and you're finding it challenging. Maybe you have worked for her and you're still dealing with the mess it brought to your life. Uh, or maybe you were meant to work in the family business you d- and you decided not to, but you're still feeling the guilt and shame uh, for your decision. In any case, 
uh, my intention with this episode is to offer you some clarity on the dynamics at play when we engage in any work environment where our mothers are involved. Um, control and manipulation is what a narcissistic mother is all about. If you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know that. Uh, so money and career are excellent tools in her arsenal uh, and she will use them if given the chance. Personally, I have worked for my mother in more than one period of my life because uh, I was <laughs> hard, a lesson that was hard learned. Uh, and also I have worked for the family business uh, which involved my narcissistic grandmother and my mother. <laughs> so that was interesting. Both of those experiences ended very badly. Uh, the last with me and my new family having to leave our home and country to start over. Um, all, of, all of it has involved me going through a lot of grief, guilt uh, and shame, as well as rage at times. And also it was a secondary trauma, as in a trauma that happens when you're older in life, um, as it has taken me a while to be able to trust my ability to work again. I, I had to to really dig deep to start something that was meaningful for me again. I Yeah, of course I worked, uh, but I always worked in things that felt like my comfort zone. Um, and I wasn't very involved and I started and stopped many, many, many times because I was afraid to get too involved. Um, so that has taken me a while. I've been so afraid for a long time that anything good I would start would be then taken away from me. Uh, like it happened with the times that I worked for my mother, which that's what happened. So maybe you have star you've started working for your mother long before you fully realized she was a narcissist. That's another case. So you started because you thought that's just the way your mother is and that's just the way your relationship is and you thought nothing of it. And then you started looking into maternal narcissism and now you are like, whoa, and how do I get out of this situation now? Maybe since you were young, it was already planned that you would be working for her, for the family business, you know, and you did everything, all your studies, all your training, everything was devoted to that. And now you're like, how do I get out of this? Or how do I even do something else? Um, maybe you would even like the actual work in itself, you know, the job that you have, and you would be good at it. But the dynamics with your mother are causing you too much suffering. But you might feel like starting on your own. Because, you know, if you are the daughter of a narcissistic mother, you've probably been put down enough that your confidence might be suffering at the moment and starting on your own feels really scary. So I'm not pretending to cover every case in one episode, of course. There are so many different ways a work relationship with a narcissistic mother can look like. As usual, take what serves you and leave the rest and please again email me with uh, with your specific situation and questions about it if you feel the need to do that if there's something that I haven't mentioned or if you have questions on some particular points you can email me um, and let me know this episode is going to cover the main challenges of working with your narcissistic mother then the patterns that might be keeping you stuck in the situation despite the pain that it causes and then how to overcome those okay so it's like in three parts um yeah let's start by having a look at the challenges of working with your narcissistic mother or for your narcissistic mother which will be more or less the same if you're working in your narcissistic family business, okay? So I'm gonna refer to narcissistic mother for the entire episode, just to make it simpler. But if you're listening to this and it's your entire family that has narcissistic dynamics and you're working for your family business and you're involved with more than one family member, that this, you know, you can kind of take a lot from this as well. So the first thing, the first challenge is the money control. Controlling your money is a very effective way to keep you from being independent. A narcissistic mother could find ways to pay you less than you deserve, for example, or she could find excuses to pay you less than what you would need to have an independent life. 
then she could find ways to take advantage of your situation. For example, by offering you to still ha live at home. So she pays you less than what you need to actually have an independent life. And then she goes, oh, darling, but you could still live with me. You know, you could still live with home, so you wouldn't have to worry about the rent. And that way she just really uh, interferes with your life. But at the same time, she looks like she's helping you as she's interfering with your life. So it leaves you in this confusing place where you don't know if she's been nice to you or if she's actually <laughs> really destroying boundaries or completely disregarding them. And, and from the outside, which remember a narcissistic mother is really concerned and uh, like her main thing is always what the whole thing looks like, like from the outside. Uh, from the outside, she will look like the perfect mother that not only has given you a job, but she's also given you maybe a house or or your own, or your car. It's her car; she just gave it to you, or you know things like that. Um, or she could pay you just enough for you to have to go ask for extra money, as if you were still a child. So you you have enough to do what you need to do, more or less. But there is always that little bit of extra that you need to ask to be able to. Like as if you were asking for pocket money uh, when you were a kid. The second challenge is you have no space for your identity to develop in your career. So you know that uh, when narcissistic, with a narcissistic mother, there is the development of identity stifled when you're young, when you're a child. But in here, we're talking about the identity in your work environment. So that means, for example, any new idea you might have uh, might not be given the consideration that it deserves. You might never have the space to grow within your work. And you might always have to ask permission for any decision that you need to make or for any new idea that you want to implement. Even if you have a, a role in your job that is like sort of high enough, you still might have to go and ask uh, your mother for could I do this, could I do that. The third challenge is that there are no boundaries. Um, narcissistic mothers do not do well with boundaries. They don't respect them. They don't. Tra they train you not to have boundaries in general. But this, I within the work environment, this can lead your mother controlling your life. And for example, using your free time. Um, if you need to ask for holidays or for free time, your mother might ask you why and get nosy and judgmental about what you want to do with your free time, completely intruding in your private life. She wouldn't do that with a normal employee, but she'll do that with you. Or you might end up being guilted into giving up your free time, you know, and work crazy over time because you are her daughter and you owe her um, something that she would not ask someone else but she'll ask you and she can do that in a way that somehow makes you feel special while at the same time she's completely controlling your life and your time um the four challenge is competition a narcissistic mother is in competition with her daughter so you might never be able to excel at your work because she won't let you and if you show talent she will either take full credit for it or put you down and criticize you, or maybe completely ignore you. Um, I remember bringing some new ideas in the work I was doing for my mother and being laughed at, being told how ridiculous it was, only for her years later actually taking all of those ideas and using them um, when I was not anymore in the work. Um, and never once acknowledging that that came from me in the first place. Never. Um, which is fine, I was already gone, but still, if you are still involved, that can really be hurtful. Um, and she can go all the way to sabotage the entire business because you are exceeding, you are excelling more than her. Um, so that could be like quite an extreme case, but that can actually happen. Um, five, never getting a break from toxicity. So. You're always with her. You never get a break from her toxic behavior and influence. It reinforces, working for your narcissistic mother reinforces the enmeshment. There are no boundaries, as we mentioned, and you're merely an extension of her, which is how a narcissistic mother views her children from the start. But like, because you're in her work, that just gets reinforced because you don't even get that little break. 
The sixth thing you need to be aware of is that she will compare you with others. Comparison is one of the way a narcissistic mother makes you feel less than you are. And this can happen with co-workers or with other siblings that maybe are also working for her. So they can, this can truly affect the relationship between siblings, turning them against each other. Overall makes for not a good work environment. You know, when you're constantly concerned to be worse than in the business compared to everyone else, to be worse than your co-workers, to have to prove your worth constantly and never be enough. And this goes hand in hand with the seventh point, which is triangulation. She will speak behind your back to others, turning people against each other. Um, and this again may happen with siblings, with other family members that are also involved in the business or with co-workers. When working for my mother, I had someone working with me and we got on super well. Myself and this person were like not only working together, but we, were, we became really good friends. And my mother didn't miss a chance to criticize this other person in front of me. She was jealous of the relationship I had with this other person uh, and put her down all the time. She would compare us and constantly tell me how this person was envious of me and nasty and this and that. So she wasn't telling me that this person was better than me, but she was telling me how this person was not actually being nice to me. There was like this constant... Uh, if I said, oh, this person did that, oh, there was always like a different interpretation my mother would offer that was negative. And so by the end of it, we actually just were not friends anymore. So it not only destroyed the work relationship, but also our friendship. And also, obviously, the, vi the business went belly up because um, the whole thing just collapsed because of this. So... And I didn't know, obviously, all of that. At the time, I didn't know. I thought my mom was advising me. I thought my mom was just you know wiser than I was I could see things better and it's been one of the things that I've carried with me and thankfully years later I was able to um, apologize with this person for not seeing what was happening but still I couldn't recover all that was lost because of that so that just to give you an example of how that can work <coughs> The next challenge is that it can cause negative impact on relationships outside work. Uh, this could be with your partner, your husband, your, your friends, even uh, anything, your life that is outside the work. So your mother could be so demanding that you might end up having no time for your family or partner, for example. Uh, this could get even worse if your, partner's, your partner is also somehow involved in the business. Again, triangulation could happen. She could make you compete with each other. Um, or have you so shame and guilted that you prioritize work over any other relationship? I remember doing anything. I would do anything. I would do overtime, run errands, just be there for no reason at all other than my mother required me to be there. I think, I don't know, for company. Um, and so because of that, I neglected my husband. And when my firstborn arrived, I neglected my child as well. Um, because I would leave her with my husband and just go running errands for my mother or do whatever she required me to do while she was actually destroying my business. <laughs> but I didn't know that. And I still was doing everything for her. And I was not aware I was doing that. Um, I felt completely justified because my mother requested that. And sort of what else was I supposed to do? Um, and it was essential and I felt like it was essential for my work when it, it absolutely wasn't when I look back now I know it wasn't but she made me feel like it was uh, I was so enmeshed that I dissociated when I was with my mother and I would lose track of time but not in a good way you know not in the good way of losing track of time when you're having fun it was losing track of time because I was not present I was not in my body I was just like not there and doing automatically what I was told to do and then sometimes I remember my husband questioning me after was why were you even doing that why were you even there and I'm like I don't know I don't even remember what I was doing but I just was <laughs> so um, that's how deep the manipulation can go point number nine never enough 
you might feel like your worth is measured by your work and your commitment to it. And you know by now that with narcissistic mother, the bar is always rising, is always too high to be reached. So no matter how hard you might be going at it, it will never be enough. You know, and that will leave you feeling inadequate and frustrated. Reinforcing that not enough pattern that has been set in you since you were a child, probably. Um, the next challenge is never be able to be in control until someone passes away or retires. And this sounds really dreadful. I mean, which is, is a very unpleasant position to be in, to be waiting for someone to die so you can finally be in the business the way you want to be. Um, and, and, and this can really cause you to feel like you're a bad person because you might have thoughts like that that come maybe in moments when you're particularly frustrated about the whole situation and go, oh my God, if that person could just be gone. And that's really not a thought that makes you feel like a good person. But it comes because of the situation you're in. So um, I, I, I had moments when I thought the only way to make the family business work and for me to remain in my home was for members of my family to pass away. Uh, which left me like feeling guilty, of course, for the thoughts and also horrible with myself and hopeless, completely hopeless, because, of course, like, I mean, that's, I mean, you're not going to act on that, but you have those thoughts like, you know, if someone just got sick and passed away and that's really horrible, but, but it happens and, and you, and because you, th you feel like that's the only solution, then there is like a sense of hopelessness that comes. It's like, it is like, I mean, it's going to be years in years and years before I can actually be happy. Uh, and that's not a really, that's not a good place to be. And I get that. So if you've ever felt that way, there's no judgment here. I, I've judged myself severely for this, um, for a very long time, but that's just, that's just what happens. And the last point of the challenges, as I think I mentioned briefly earlier, is the business sabotaging. So your mother, you, she could sabotage the business because you're being better than her at it. That's one thing. But also she might very well sabotage the business in order to keep the victim story and the struggle going. You know, if, if, that's, the, if that's the drum that she's been beating, the being the victim, oh, I struggled so much to create this work and life is a struggle and work is struggle and all of that. To keep that going and to keep the attention that comes with that, she might actually just sabotage the entire thing. Not caring if that destroys your life also, if you're losing your home in, in, in the process as well, if you're losing your, your you know, the money, your income, um, she doesn't care. Uh, my mother often said things like, you know, that won't work. This work environment is a hard one. So no matter what you do, you will always struggle. And she would keep that struggle. Even in times when I was actually being successful at what I was doing for her, she would just find ways to make it turn into a struggle. Um, so that's, those are the challenges. And with all that said, it might seem easy and simple from the outside. So if someone was listening to this from the outside and is not in the situation you're in, is they're completely out of it, they're working not for their mothers and they don't have all those things going on in their life, they could l listen to this and go, well, you know, why are you in that job? Just leave your job, get another. Leave that situation. What, you know, it, it seems like quite a simple thing to say um, and very rational too, but I know it does not feel that simple when you find yourself in that situation. It definitely was not that simple for me. I thought my life was all laid out for me, actually. The job I was going to do was that. I trained since childhood in it. Uh, and it was the only thing my mother ever spoke to me about. So if I wanted to have a relationship with my mother, being involved in that job in some way or another was the only way to have a relationship with her. Um... If I wanted her attention, I had to be involved in that. She criticized anything else. Any other job would be put down and laughed at or criticized. Or, um, only, only people that were in this work would be talked about. Uh, probably not in a nice way anyways, but 
at least they got attention okay so that that was the only thing she seemed to care about um and also she has left me um pretty much being raised by my grandmother because of her work so her work was the only thing she cared about so it made sense for me to want to be part of that because if i'm part of her work then she can't leave me again so again it seemed like a good way to be loved and validated and so if you're stuck in any of these dynamics and this is my personal experience but there's a lot of different ways we're going to look into uh, the binds that keep us working for our narcissistic mothers um you know it's not that simple to break that pattern and get out of it maybe you started working for your mother long before we said that long before you became aware of her narcissism so now you don't know how to get out of it now you're really stuck in it you feel like you're really stuck um or maybe again like i said you prepared your whole life for this business and you don't feel like you know how to do anything else i I wasn't sure I could do anything else. That had become a role. Um, I would introduce myself saying what my job was before I'd say anything else about me. That becomes your identity. Um, you know, that pretend identity that we spoke about in a couple of episodes ago. So, so let's have a look at some of the core binds that keep us in that loop of pain. Um, even when we know we should get out of it, that we feel like this is not working and there's a lot of pain involved, but we're still hanging around. So let's look at that. So the first thing, and that's the big one, it's the guilt. Okay, you know about guilt tripping, a narcissistic mother guilt trips you and she's done that probably for the best part of your life. She started in childhood, she made you feel responsible for her, for her emotional state. And so why not make you feel responsible for her job too and 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 within that environment you know saying things to you like i need you in this job no one could do it like you do so kind of making you feel special but only to keep you stuck in the loop or what would i do without you here you know your brother is not able to do what you do so again putting siblings against each other and guilting you into staying around because you are the only one that can do it i was so I was told this so much. There was no one else that could do what I could do. And again, comparison with my sister, which were not fair, not like they were horrible, but they just kept me stuck and stuck and stuck in that. Or she could say things like, if you leave now, you doom the business. Your family has worked so hard to build. Do you really want to do that? So putting the entire responsibility of generations of business on your shoulders. Um, or I dedicated my life to this work all for you to take it on after me. Again, all the responsibility. Like my mother left when I was 12 and went in a different country um, to start whatever business that she was in. And and years later, oh, all I did was for you. All I did was always for you. It's like, no, it wasn't. It really wasn't for me at all. Now I can see that really well, all the patterns and dynamics and the crap she was running away from. She was running away from her own mother and whatever. But it was all for me, all for me, always all for me. And so again, all the responsibility feels like it's on your shoulders and you get guilted into stay in the job. How could you leave when all of that is true? Okay. The second the second uh, bind, the second thing that keeps you there is feeling responsible for your mother. That goes hand in hand with the guilt tripping. It's slightly different. There's a little bit of a difference. So as if, you, if you've seen your mother, for example, struggle and work hard for years, okay, and maybe using the work as an excuse for neglecting you, that was my experience, as I mentioned, you might end up feeling responsible for her for the business, and she makes sure of that, you might feel responsible, you finally have the power to, or you feel like you have the power to uh, support her, so that she doesn't have to struggle anymore, you're finally, you know, a child always wants to uh, prevent their parents from struggling, 
um, and, and, and a child will always automatically take on the whole responsibility of that. You know, you could see your mother cry and you think it's your fault because, because it's always, that's just what a child does. We want to make our parents feel good. And so finally you're an adult and finally you can take over the work and finally she can stop struggling and suffering and working so hard. Um, that's, as we said, in the challenges, that's not going to happen because if the story of struggle, it's what she goes for and the victimhood is what she goes for, she will find, either she will sabotage everything so that she continue the struggle or she will find other ways to keep that story going, okay, and struggle somewhere else. But e the bottom line is she's not your responsibility. Her work life is not your responsibility. Whatever business she's decided to work at is not your responsibility. But that's what we feel. We feel responsible. So that keeps us stuck in the loop. The third thing is the lack of identity separate from your mother, okay? Uh, a narcissistic mother stifles your natural development of identity. We said that. Again, you can look, listen to, I believe it was the last episode actually of last week where I spoke of this. Um, so I go in depth into the whole identity thing if you want to listen to that. But just to go back on this now, she might have pushed all your life for you to identify with this job as I said before, so for you to be enmeshed with her and this job as an extension of her. And so again, your identity is completely connected with this job. Y you don't see yourself as a separate thing from your job. Your job is not something outside of you. It's a deep intrinsic part of you and it's part of your identity. And so how do you get out of that? The fourth thing that keeps us stuck in the loop is the need for validation not feeling good enough. You know, your mother has put you down and criticized you or neglected you enough that you feel inadequate and unable to do anything else. It's true fear that you feel at the thought of going on your own. I get that. It's like bloody terror at the idea of, of having to go into the world and start something of your own or work somewhere else or try to learn some other thing. Or It's this scary because you feel like you're not enough and you need the validation from your mother you need her to tell you that you're doing good you need and if you change job she's not going to validate that of course actually the opposite so um they're going to lose that that's a big thing and i really get it the next thing that keeps us stuck there is the social pressure um this may lead you to feel ungrateful for the great opportunity your great mother is gifting you. You know, remember the narcissists do their best to look good in the eyes of the public opinion. So people that observe the situation from the outside have no idea of the dynamics and the patterns that go on on the inside, okay, uh, behind closed doors. They will say things like, oh, you're so lucky to have this job. Oh, isn't your mother great to have created all of this just for you? Uh, oh, what else would you be doing? I mean, you'd be silly to go looking for something else when you have this. Or things like, you're just like your mother was, so involved in the job, you should be proud. You know, and, and so again, this makes you feel lonely. You're the only one that is experiencing what goes on behind closed door and it's really hard to talk about it with anyone else because what they're seeing is how great your mother is and how great the opportunity you have is and how ungrateful you would be if you refuse that. And that puts a lot of pressure. The next thing that keeps us stuck in there is the money bind. As we mentioned, the money control in the challenges. And here we talk about it again because you might actually be in the situation where you are financially unable to leave. You know, like the only income you're getting is from this job. Maybe she's managed to have you involved like to have your home being involved in the whole thing as well. Like that was for me, like the house came with the job. It, you know, they weren't two separate things or maybe you have mortgage or, you know, you can have a heap of financial binds that make you feel like if you leave this job, then what else? <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to be really, really, really in difficulties financially. And and that also comes from the fact of giving you just enough money. You know, she gives you just enough money to keep you around 
and to keep you working there, but not enough so that you're independent enough to have maybe savings or whatever and to be actually able to change if you want to change. Um, my mother's messing with my work has left me in poverty twice. And when I say in poverty, I mean that, as in with nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, so I, I know how that feels and I really get it if that is your situation. And the seventh thing that keeps us in the loop is the fear of losing connection, okay? Losing connection with your mother, losing connection with your entire family perhaps, maybe with your siblings in particular. If you decide to leave, that might cost you not only the relationship with your mother, but also the one with other family members because they might not understand the situation you're in. Again, they don't see what happens behind closed doors or maybe it's a narcissistic family dynamic. So if you leave, like everyone turns against you. Um, so again, this may leave you feeling very lonely in the whole situation and finding it really hard because, I mean, that's really unfair, isn't it? To be told, okay, if you leave, you're going to lose. We're not going to talk to you anymore. We're not going to see you the same way we did before where, you know, like you're out of this family. If you're out of the business, you're out of the family. Um, <coughs> and that really happens and it's very hurtful. And so that can very well keep you stuck in the work because you don't want that to happen. So if you're feeling any of this, I want you to know that I really get it. I have been in this situation. I'm going to give you a little bit of my personal experience, just a little bit. But um, the first time I went working for my mother, I, I was fresh out of college. And I was so hopeful and passionate about the work and the opportunity. I was finally able to be beside my mother who had lived abroad since I was 12. So I was like 21, 22, 22 and finally 10 years or so of being away from my mother. Obviously I was seeing her at times, but like a way as in not living in the same country and then finally be able to live with her and being the chosen one to continue on with her work that she was kind of trying to retire from. Oh, that's what she told me because <coughs> she never actually did. She's still working now today in that same job. Um, so I left the rest of my family and I left in a way actually that caused my father and grandmother to stop talking to me for a long time actually after that uh, because my mother is not the only narcissist in my family. So um, choosing my mother over other members of the family made them feel entitled not to talk to me. Um, so in the end, it costed me my relationship with my boyfriend, several friendships, and my mother completely destroyed the business also that I had been called to work into for her in her pursuit of her victim story. So I was left without a penny and having to look for any work available in a different country and with my family, the rest of my family telling me, I told you so. Um, so that was the first and that was really traumatic. Uh, this is a simplified version of how that went, but that was really traumatic. That was actually really, really intense. The second time, so I had gone back home. At this point, I had my husband, wh what's now, wh who the person that now is my husband was with me and we went back to Italy, to my country. Um, and... And we started the business. We worked really hard. I was pregnant and still, you know, did a lot of work to start a business. Um, and I had my baby and she came and she took over everything. So I was already a little bit in a difficult situation because I had gone home and I was working in the family business. So the, the binds with my narcissistic grandmother were, were at play. There was a lot there already. But she came as well and everything went even worse. So uh, in the end, she ran the business that myself and my husband had created into the ground. Uh, she sabotaged the whole thing and she, I, we had to leave. So I had to leave what was my home. Uh, I had to leave everything behind. I had to start over again without a penny. And we, had to, we ended up going into a different country to do this. And in all of it, I felt like a failure. I felt shame. I felt guilt. I felt like I 
desperately wanted to work with my mother and have a relationship with her, but I couldn't do it. And I was unable to stick it out. I was unable to do. And she even told me that. She was like, you never finish what you've started. That's a, That has been a pattern in your life. You know, you never finish what you've started. And I'm like, well, I now know <laughs> why. But at the time, I truly believed that. Um, I felt like an idiot for believing it was possible. I felt lost also when my dreams shattered. Um, my body got sick as a result. I had depression. I had cr- chronic pain. I wasn't able to feel any joy. And I wasn't able to feel any drive to do anything or any hope. And this went on for years after that. Like, as I said, after this second time around, it took me a long time to do anything that I was invested in, that I really loved. Um, I think this, what I'm doing now, actually, (laughs) is really the first time that I am really fully, completely invested in it. Um, And that was all because of that. So... I I really get you. I really get the dynamics, the patterns. I get what goes on inside of you. Um, although I can't know the specifics, I don't know you, but I do get the yeah the mechanisms, and I really get the how challenging that is, and how hurtful that is, and how frustrating and and raging it is also because you want to break free and you feel like you can't, and you don't know how. Why am I not breaking free out of this? It doesn't make rational sense and still I'm stuck. What the hell? So I get that. I really do. I really do. Um, So now, how can we go about dealing with all this? Because that's the next part, (coughs) which is really important. This is where we get the the good news, the empowering stuff, you know, what you can do about it. Now, the answer to this question is very personal and specific to your situation. So I can't go that specific of course unless I know you and and know what your specific situation is but whether you want to leave your job uh, that involves your mother or you want to stay in it despite everything but finding ways to make it work there are a few things to keep in mind and so this is what we're going to focus on (coughs) this is going to work whether you decide you want to live and you're done with it, or you want to stick around and figure out ways to make it work. Um, So the first thing is to remember, keep in mind, I mean, write signs around the place that remind you of that. You do not owe your mother anything. (coughs) You don't owe her a thing. Her life, her work, her choices are not your responsibility. She's an adult. And she makes her own decisions. <coughs> so do you. You are responsible for your life, never for hers. That's really important to remember. You are not responsible for her. Second, she will not change. <coughs> this is not about you. It's completely about her. Everything she says, everything she does, it's about her. It's n- it doesn't matter how you turn up, what you do, how much you work. It doesn't matter. Everything is about her. Everything around a narcissist is always about them. So no matter how hard you work, how much you sacrifice, how much energy you put into it, she will never acknowledge it and she will not change her way of going about things. So whether you decide to stay or leave, you need to detach from the need for her to change. Third point, set boundaries in the right way. Okay, you know I know I don't actually use right or wrong as a wording, but there's a way of setting boundaries that w- that works and a way that doesn't. So set boundaries in a way that works. And to set them in a way that works, you need to set them for yourself as opposed to try and set them for her. And I'm going to give you an example to make this clear. So you cannot stop your mother from asking you to do crazy extra hours at work for example okay you can tell your mother stop asking me to do crazy extra hours she won't stop maybe you've told her many times and she might even say that she got it only to find manipulative ways to get you to do crazy hours again she'll just change tactic she mightn't ask you straight away but or you know straight on but she'll find ways okay and you don't even know how you got there but you find yourself again doing crazy hours 
So what you can do instead is say no when she asks. So this is a boundary that you set to yourself. It's like an if then. If my mother asks me to do extra hours, then my answer will always be no. That's it. So it's a boundary to yourself. It's not a boundary to her behavior because her behavior, as we said, is not going to change. So you need to approach every boundary setting with that in mind. Number four, get clear about what you want. Not what she wants. That is her story. Or what you might think she would love you for. Okay, but what you want. And you can ask yourself questions and get curious. Like, how do you want your life to look like? What people do you truly want in your life and why? I really wanted my mother in my life, but I why did I want her in my life? I mean, was that going to really be helpful? And I did really, really wanted my husband to be in my life. And if the choice came down to the two of them, my husband was always going to win. <laughs> so, you know, get curious. Is keeping this job truly essential for your vision, for what you want in life? What do you truly like doing? Do you even know that? Do you even know what you truly like doing? Is keeping in relationship with your mother or other family members worth the suffering you're going through? So again, there's no right or wrong answer to these questions, but it's worth reflecting on. It's worth really taking the time to reflect on this. And if you can't get a clear vision right now, I get it. So if the answer to all of these questions was, I, I actually don't know, don't feel bad about that. Um, it's very natural not to know. I get it. Um, um, there were times I truly had no idea. It has taken me years actually to know what I wanted and what I liked. That's part of reclaiming your identity and it is a process. Um, you know, it has taken me years to fully realize that I worked for my mother, for example, and thought I was passionate about the work just to feel connected and loved by her. You know, I speak to it now, but I didn't know that back then I had no idea I had no awareness of it and also that I was working in the family business just because that was what my father wanted for me to fulfill his dreams that he didn't get the chance to pursue when he was younger or that's what he says um, and so out of and, and so to get a relationship going with him and to be validated by him I had to fulfill his dreams and also out of guilt towards my grandmother because she was she's a vulnerable narcissist and guilt tripping is her number one technique so guilt has been the glue and bind of that relationship so all of that but what did I want <laughs> you know that question has taken me years and a great deal of inner work to answer so I'm not a, you know don't expect to have the answers to all these questions but start looking start asking start getting curious and if you can get clear ask yourself what do you need to get in order to get the clarity I needed peace I needed space and that's why I moved away like I put half a continent between myself and my family and I didn't mind I lived in poverty I, I had a lot of struggles and a lot but I needed that peace and that space and that period although it was difficult was what I needed to get to the point that I had clarity. So you might not have clarity, but what do you need? So the next question is, what do you need in order to get clarity? Maybe some time away, maybe some space, maybe some peace, maybe whatever it is for you. Um, and then, then go about, about it that way. The fifth thing is to get support. There are mother wounds that you carry and trauma bonds that are keeping you stuck and are holding you back and are keeping you in that situation. So you can't do this alone and you don't need to do this alone. Uh, doing it alone is really hard. And I've done it alone for a good portion of it. And it was really hard. <laughs> um, I then found support and I'm still so grateful for the support. And if I had found that support earlier, that would have been <laughs> a lot easier. Um, so that's why I will always advise to get support. One-on-one -on -one support, 
to work specifically on your situation and group support to heal those relational wounds and to start feeling safe again. And that might very well be what you need in order to get clarity. You know, the support, a safe environment, um, a safe container where you can explore, heal and explore, allow the old patterns to go uh, and new uh, the new you to come out the the you know the real you so so yeah that's that's what we can do in this situation let's recap for a second so you don't know your mother and you don't owe your mother anything that's important to remember the first one she will not change is the second one um, set boundaries for yourself and not for her is the third one then get clear about what you want get curious about yourself and who you are and what you want and then the last one get support uh, find the right support for you so this was a big episode there was a lot in it and I hope it was helpful and I know there's a bunch of you out there that are working for your mother or that have been and still carry the wounds of that and so I really really wanted to speak to that it has been intense for me because to do this episode I had to relieve um, a lot of memories <laughs> that yeah that were buried so it was good uh, when you can bring it back to the surface you go a layer deeper and so I want to thank you for that because being able to do this episode has helped me go a layer deeper on a lot of stuff um, so thank you and again reach out if you want uh, if you have questions and you need answers if you want to share your experience with me reach out and also check the link in the description if you're interested in the women's circles whether live or recorded and if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one work send me an email and also there is always the free self-love guided practice the link again is in the description if you haven't accessed that yet you can do that by following the link so with that i'm gonna leave you give, send you lots of love bye for now <laughs>